Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett and on this channel we talk about all things Gen Chem related. On this video, I'll be introducing covalent bonding and help you to understand how to draw Lewis structures with them. Let's get started. So earlier in this chapter, I introduced the different types of bonding that can occur. We talked about that there is ionic bonding, which involves metals and nonmetals and that transforming of electron process. We also very briefly talked about metallic bonding, which solely involves metals that are able to delocalize those electrons and create that pool or sea of electrons. And then the other main type of bonding that we discussed was covalent bonding. And so we'll be delving in deep on what that is and how it may show up in these Lewis structures. So remember that word covalent, if we break that word down, co means shared, valent means valence, so the outer shell. So in these compounds, we're gonna have a sharing of those valence electrons occurring. Now Lewis theory says that another way that we can actually achieve that octet is through this sharing process. And that octet, whenever we're counting how many electrons are found around an atom, we're gonna be taking into account not only the electrons that are solely on it, but also those that are being shared between two different atoms. And so that sharing that we now know is what we are calling covalent bonding. So in covalent bonding, when we're doing this, contrary to how ionic bonding is, we will actually be showing bonding, a connecting point between the different atoms that are present. And so you wanna make sure you can dis distinguish between a shared electron or a bonded electron and a lone electron. Lone electrons or lone pairs are those that are found individually on an atom and are not shared amongst two different atoms. And so if we looked at this diagram here, remember that word pair, pair means two. So a bonding pair or a lone pair is indicative that there's two electrons involved. And so on this atom here, we can see that between the sulfur and the oxygen, there are these electrons here that look to be between the two of them. They're not isolated to one or the other. And so those are what we're referencing as our bonding pairs, okay? Now, we also have these non-bonding pairs, these pairs that are not involved in the sharing, the shared aspect, and that's what are called our lone pairs, okay? So make sure you can distinguish lone pairs, bonding pairs. So within an atom, there are different types of covalent bonds that may show up you could have one connecting point between atoms and that's known as a single covalent bond. So a single covalent bond involves two atoms that are shared between two different atoms. Um, and one atom may use more than one single bond to fulfill its octet. So things like hydrogen that only have an electron, one single electron to connect with, they may only be satisfied with one single covalent bond. But for other elements, you could have multiple single bonds that are present to get them up to that octet. So when we're drawing these, we're gonna start in that same manner that we did with our ionics. We start by drawing the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure is those um, valence electrons being represented. So if we had something like F2, fluorine gas, when we're going to draw the, the Lewis structure for it, we would first start by writing two fluorine atoms because it's F2. Then we give each fluorine its respective seven valence electrons. And notice that that single electron is, is pointed toward the middle because it creates an easy connecting point. And then we use those two electrons to create the pair. And so how that helps, well, if we look at individually how many electrons each atom has, at this point, before they've bonded, each atom only has seven electrons. However, when they're sharing this electron, and, and you may see that depicted as a horizontal line, well, now when we count around the fluorine on the left, we have eight and on the fluorine on the right, we now have eight because they're sharing that middle set of electrons. And so both atoms end up being satisfied. And so the end Lewis structure would look like so. We can see this also present in something like water, water, which we know is H2O. And so if we go, go about doing this, following that same schematic, we start off by laying out our atoms giving each one its individual valence electrons and doing a count. I always recommend doing a count before you just start throwing bonds in. So around the hydrogen, we have one each and around the oxygen, we have six. 
And so we see an opportunity to share between these two electrons and these two electrons. Well, how does that sharing impact things? Well, now by sharing the hydrogens now have two each around them, which is good because remember hydrogens are looking for that duet rather than an octet. They're satisfied with only two around them. And our oxygen now, if you count all that's around there, we have a total of eight. And so that means that we are satisfying our octet. And so our Lewis structure would look like so, where again, a line is indicative of two electrons being shared between two different atoms. Um, you can also use this as an opportunity to practice counting how many Lewis, excuse me, how many lone pairs you have versus how many bonding pairs. In the uh, structure to the left, F2, we would end up having six lone pairs and one bonding pair, that pair that's connecting the two. In the water molecule, we have two lone pairs and two bonding pairs, okay? And so make sure you get some good practice with that. When we get to chapter 10, being able to distinguish those two things is gonna be critical. All right, so we talked about single bonds. All right, the next type of bonding that we can have is a double covalent bond. So the word double should indicate that, well, that's twice as many as the single, right? And so in a double covalent bond, you now have two sets of connecting points between two different atoms. Each of those require two electrons. So that means a double covalent bond overall involves four electrons. Now, I always recommend students to just do one set of bonds first and then come back around and add double bonds. Y'all love double bonds for some reason, but don't go haywire with them. Always do one first and then come, come back and add them after you've counted how many electrons are present. And so if we look at the oxygen molecule, so O2, Again, we give each one its valence electron, so each has six. If we started by making one single connecting point there, well, that helps up the, the number. I now have seven around oxygen each, but neither one of them has met that octet yet. So how we can go about doing this, and this is where pencils are really beneficial over pens, we can then remove these electrons that are on the outer outside and move them inward to create an additional connecting point. When we do that, that additional connecting point now pushes our count on both sides up to eight, okay? And so our overall Lewis structure would look like this, where we have two bonding pairs and then a total of four lone pairs surrounding these atoms. And then last but not least, we have your triple bond. And as you guessed it with the triple bond, yes, there's gonna be six total electrons involved. In a triple bond, that's three connecting points, three bridges basically between two different atoms to get both of them to that eight. Again, same process. Give one set of single bonds first, step back and do your count, and then after you've done so, adjust as needed to get both atoms to their octet. And so if we start with something like N2, well, with N2, each atom would start with five valence electrons. It's a group five nonmetal. If I make one connecting point between them, well, that helps, but I now only have six electrons around each nitrogen, five of its own, sharing one more. I can go in and let's say move some of these lone, these electrons, these non-bonded electrons, hopefully you can see this, to make another pair. And that's good, that gets me a little closer. We get up to seven. And to get to eight, I would actually need a third pair. And that would now allow me to have eight electrons around each atom. So with your triple covalent bond, you have three connecting points between each of the atoms and your Lewis structure will look like so. All right. And so there's a couple predictions associated with these um, different um, expected uh, Lewis structures that you would end up seeing. First, we have hydrogen, and hydrogen is typically most stable when it's singly bound to one other atom, whether it be itself or to other atoms like we saw in the water example, or like what we're seeing here with the um, hydrogen to chlorine example. We also know oxygen is most stable when it has two different bonding points connected to that, to it, whether that be through two single bonds or through a double bond like what we saw in the H2 um, excuse me, in the O2 example. OK, 
Okay. And then a few other things to keep in mind with our covalent bonding, what happens here? Well, the uh, Lewis theory of covalent bonding says that the attraction between atoms is directional. So that's different than what we saw in ionic compounds. So because of this, we can actually have compounds that exist that have nonmetals present as individual molecular units. So remember, ionic compounds, there are no discrete individual molecules. With molecular compounds or these compounds that have these covalent bonding occurring, you can have individual discrete molecules that exist. Um, also, in, in regards to this, some properties with covalent bonding, well, Lewis theory predicts that they will tend to have very low melting and boiling points compared to ionic compounds. Um, and this really involves that attraction that's between those molecules is a little bit less. It's not as strong as what you see in ionic compounds, so we don't need as much energy to break them. So therefore, boiling and melting can happen a little easier. Um, so we do, in fact, see that molecular compounds tend to have much lower melting points, much lower boiling points, and are often found at all three physical states at room temperature, whereas our ionic compounds at room temperature are typically found as solid materials. And so um, something we're going to touch and get into more in chapter 11 are these things called intermolecular forces or intermolecular attraction. And so we are going to see that those intermolecular forces do play a role in these properties that we're going to be seeing, whether or not they can blend with water, how volatile they'll be, how easily they get in the gas phase and so forth. But we're going to get into those in chapter 11. So make sure you guys come back to see those videos. All right. And then uh, one other thing that, or two other things that we're going to talk about regarding the model and, and what we see in reality. Um, so Lewis theory also predicts that the more electrons that are shared between different atoms, the stronger that they will be. And that indeed is true. So we do see that triple bonds, which has six electrons, are much stronger than double bonds, which are much stronger than single bonds. Now, the theory would actually predict that you know, a double bond should take twice as much energy to break or a triple bond should take three times as much energy to break compared to a single bond. However, we do see that that is not the case. There is a considerable amount more that's needed to break or make those bonds, but it's not exactly double or triple. And then one other piece of model versus reality, um, the Lewis theory does predict that the more electrons that are being shared between atom, the shorter it will be. Basically, those connecting points are able to pull those atoms close to one another. They're holding on to each other very tightly. Um, now, the bond length is going to be determined by um, the, those electrons that are present. So in general, what you will see is that triple bonds are much shorter than double bonds, which are much shorter than single bonds. So single bonds are the longest, but also the weakest type of bond. Triple bonds are the shortest, but also the strongest. All right. So I hope that information helped you guys understand covalent bonding and how to do Lewis structures with it. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other material you'd like to see. Come back for more videos um, for this chapter, and I'll see you guys in the future. Have a great day.